welcome back, everyone. Um, if you haven't noticed, there's a far left Marxist organization called Black Lives Matter that is apparently sweeping across the country uh, with little to no uh, resistance whatsoever. And they are getting the full backing of the media, Hollywood, academia, not to mention all the big corporations who I guess uh, think that they can save themselves by backing this group unconditionally, unquestionably. Uh, even the Republican Party seems completely spineless and unwilling to do anything uh, to stand up to the to these people. Um, the fact of the matter is, Black Lives Matter, the slogan, the organization, uh, there, there's plenty to criticize about the organization. They're, they're two different things. Um, the organization itself, we all know, and they're very open about it. Uh, it's got very little to do with black lives. Uh, and you see this often when you try to call them out, you know, for not caring about the vast majority of black lives. You know, they don't seem very focused on that. We'll get into that later. So my point is, is like I just said, the media sort of molds reality to suit Black Lives Matter. And now we're to the point where you can't criticize them or question them or else they will descend on you and you will be canceled. You'll be fired. You'll be uh, labeled a racist so that everyone around you hates you. Your neighbors hate you. That's what they want. They want people scared to speak up and we're going to get into that but first just give me a quick moment to tell you about this episode's sponsor orion metals exchange what will your savings in retirement look like once we've declared victory over the virus many americans use this little known irs qualified loophole that allows americans to buy gold and silver with their retirement accounts call today and request a free investment kit below mention drone tech politics and get a free one ounce silver coin for qualified retirement account holders must be over 40 to qualify, call 866-915-5053 and get your free investment guide today. We're back. I appreciate y'all watching that. These people who sponsor this channel are great companies. They uh, actually, you know, I think put a lot of risk into supporting channels like mine uh, where other companies are pulling their ads. These guys are supporting channels like mine. So I highly recommend that if you want to support this channel, a great way to do it would be to support our sponsors. My issue and the issue everybody should have with this group and the response from all the institutions that I just listed <clears throat> is the fact that you're not allowed to question this group, you're not allowed to criticize them. People who are doing this are receiving backlash that ruins their lives. They lose their jobs. Um, they're, you know, pushed to the fringes or treated like they're racist or they're monsters because they raise questions about a group that by its own uh, admittance, by its own description, has Marxist uh, training and Marxist roots. So I just kind of want to go over all the legitimate reasons people should be questioning this organization. And, and we'll also talk about all the people who are paying for their uh, resistance to BLM. Uh, my first issue is that this group has a history of racism. Uh, not only do you have three extremists who started it, the leaders around the country and in other countries are extreme and racist. I mean, you have like the, the leader in Toronto saying that whites are subhumans and genetically inferior and really sounding like a Nazi. And for some reason, people just it's like it doesn't even register when it comes to I mean, people like us, you know, we hear that uh, we see that and we react to it the way any normal human being would. But these people on the left, they're so they're so wrapped up in this cult and this dogma that they, their brains won't allow them to. Um, and it's not just that. I mean, there is there was the incident where Black Lives Matter showed up to a library, I believe at Dartmouth University, and started accosting people at the library, uh, calling them filthy white fucks. And um, there's actually video of this, which I'll play a little bit here. So you say, and there's a lot of white people in this group too, which is kind of weird. You see, there's tons of white people. And they're calling people filthy white folks. And just like, you know, bothering people at this library. <laughs> they're trying to study. Like, what's the point of this? Anyway, my point is about this particular story is that. You can't find it anywhere now. It seems like the original story uh, it came from two places. One, Mediate.com had run a story, and I remember when it happened. It was a big story. And uh, Campus Reform also covered it. They had the video. 
Although in the video, you can't hear anybody saying filthy white fucks, but several people who were interviewed about the story did say that that happened. And it actually used to be in this Mediate.com story, but if you go there now, it's no longer there. It's gone. They scrubbed the story. And, uh, <laughs> you know, if you search for it, if I go back here and search for it, you'll see there's nothing. There's, like, no stories. There's a Reddit post here. Oh, let's go to the Reddit post. Oh! Oh, no, the group is gone. It's been removed. Huh. Interesting. So, <clears throat> obviously, the media wants to mold reality to suit Black Lives Matter. <clears throat> and you saw the same thing when that ambush of those five police officers in Dallas happened. Uh, it happened during a Black Lives Matter protest. This guy ambushed five cops. I'm not going to play the video, but if you go out, you can find video. This guy literally running up on cops, gunning them down. He ended up getting uh, backed up into a hotel room where the cops eventually threw grenades in, I believe. Or, or no, they drove a robot in that exploded and killed him. Uh, but I remember immediately after that, and you might even be able to find it in this article, but the, the media and even the police chief, I remember, was like, oh, no, he said he wasn't, a, he wasn't affiliated with Black Lives Matter. He wasn't a part of Black Lives Matter. It's like, come on, are, are we supposed to believe this? It's funny, when, when you bring stuff like this up, Typically, their defense will be, oh, but BLM's not an organized, it's not an organized group. It's a lot of different uh, factions and different groups, and they all kind of have their own uh, uh, de uh, demands. Um, yet, when, it's th when it comes to this, suddenly, oh, he's not affiliated with Black Lives Matter. Oh, okay. Uh, and I'm not going to search this article, but it might be in there somewhere. But just imagine, like, a Tea Party person had gone off on a shooting spree or something, <clears throat> the media would never, ever go to these links to, like, scrub history or, um, you know, put on a PR offensive to help the image of that group. It would never happen. And, in fact, if you go back to the Tea Party uh, times, the media was constantly, anytime there was a shooting or anything, they were always trying to connect it to Tea Party people or the, or the Republicans or something to the point that several reporters actually ended up having to quit who were big reporters at the time. I can't remember who it was, but... Because they came out and said, oh, this was a Tea Party person. Nope, wrong. It wasn't. And that happened several times. It became a trope. So this first story we're going to talk about, uh, and a lot of this seems to be ha happening in academia and in government. Uh, but in this case, it was a Catholic teacher fired for criticizing the Black Lives Matter movement. Uh, and basically, uh, so conservatives must be on the offensive to secure political victories, said Timothy Gordon, a Catholic high school theology teacher who was fired for criticizing BLM. Gordon described BLM as a terrorist organization on Twitter. He recalled, I said Black Lives Matter is a terrorist organization. BLM was declared a BIE, a black identity extremist movement, which is a form of home spurned terror, according to the FBI. And that's undeniable. I mean, it's very true. And what does BLM do? They make demands or they promise uh, uh, violence in response if they're not met. Um, and there are many examples of this. I mean, we just watched two, three weeks of riots and looting uh, that was supposedly in response to them not getting what they wanted. And, you know, we saw that with the instance I just talked about, what was going on in that library, uh, the ambush on those cops and other ambushes on cops that came from, in a lot of cases, lies from the media a great example would be hands up don't shoot which cnn promoted heavily that led to police being killed and it was a total lie it was uh, it was misinformation so timothy gordon goes on blm is essentially a non-falsifiable religious cult that sets itself specifically against christianity just like the french revolution did said gordon they want to destroy the western nuclear family and that's true I, and i talked about this in my video the other day uh they're very open about this and uh What's that have to do with black lives? I, I, one of the three, one of the things that's really hurting the black community right now is lack of stable families. Uh, and of course, I'll be called a white supremacist for saying that. Don Lemon said that very thing just seven years ago, way off in ancient history of seven years ago. Raised without much structure, young black men often reject education and gravitate towards the street culture, drugs, hustling, gangs. Nobody forces them to do that. Again, it is a personal decision. He is right about that too. But in my estimation, he doesn't go far enough. Because black people, if you really want to fix the problem, here's just five things 
that you should think about doing. And number one, and probably the most important, just because you can have a baby, it doesn't mean you should, especially without planning for one or getting married first. What the hell was that? And yet, this is what they want to go after. They want to attack the nuclear family. See, and they want to defend, defund police. It seems both of these actions uh, would hurt the black community more than any other community. Clearly, there's questions to be raised here. There's there's uh, uh, plenty of things to have a conversation about, yet if you do, you end up like this guy and you end up fired from your job. Or in this case, we have an Indiana bishop who was suspended for criticizing BLM. The bishop of Lafayette, India was suspended, a priest from public ministry, for penning an essay saying that BLM had betrayed the civil rights legacy of Martin Luther King and Frederick, Frederick Douglass. In his article, the father acknowledged that the brutal murder of a black man in police custody has sparked a landslide of reaction to the alleged systemic racism in America. And that's the key. It's, it, it is alleged. You know, the media, academia, these, these BLM, these groups that support them all act like this is undeniable, undebatable. And it is set in stone. It's not. There's plenty. There's plenty to argue about. And in fact, they can't prove that it exists. Uh, there's way more evidence that it doesn't exist than that it does exist. And that's a whole other video. I'm not going to go into that. This video. But he points out that BLM has been co-opted. I wouldn't say co-opted because they are a Marxist movement, so they are natural allies with violent groups like Antifa. But he points out that they are part of. They're co-opted by Antifa, and there's no real interest in the black community. I have to agree. The, uh, nothing that they're calling for would help the black community. Where is the media? Where, who in the media is asking if any of these demands that they're making would help the black community? Is anybody? Nobody is because questioning it makes you the enemy. We see what happens when you question these things. Look at what happened with uh, Brett Weinstein at Evergreen College. He questioned it. Uh, he was set upon and fired. On the topic of BLM, the slogan Black Lives Matter, these murals that are painted everywhere, and what that all really means... Um, I think that BLM, Black Lives Matter, is a slogan, and it, it's a slogan that everybody agrees with. I mean, uh, there's probably a tiny percentage of people out there who hate black people and think their lives don't matter, but the vast majority of us realize we didn't need to be told that. All, and this is why this is why people shoot back with "All Lives Matter," because it's an insult to lecture the country to, to talk to us like we don't know that. It's like most of us just realize that all human life matters. And so it's an insult to say that, oh, you people all need to be told that black lives matter from these uh, violent uh, young people who really don't know anything about anything. You know, they, they're, it's the blind leading the blind in a lot of cases with these folks. Uh, but like I said, we all know black lives matter. We all know all lives matter. And the vast majority of people out there have always known that. We didn't need to be told. And it's really incredibly insulting. And actually pretty racist to assume that because that white people don't know that we have to be educated we have to be re-educated about that it's it's absurd it's the same thing when it comes to like when they say oh trump's putting racist dog whistles out and all this and that's why people support i never got these dog whistles i would never support somebody that i thought was an actual white supremacist racist i would never in a million years support that person uh and so whatever they're hearing whatever dog whistles they're hearing i never heard um and the, the stats are, are undeniable, okay? Black people kill other black people, just like white people kill other white people. We all know this. But black people kill black people way more than every other group. So when you look at the amount of murder in each group, there's way more murder in the black group. Okay, that's the problem. And when it comes to interracial murder, or I'm sorry, interracial murder, there's more black on white than white on black. That's just a fact. And there isn't more. I mean, it's not like there there's some huge threat from black people uh, against white people. I don't think that. But just if you're going to look at the those stats, there's more of one than the other. And it's more black on white. And there's really, I could spend a lot of time going over examples. I'm trying to keep this video down somewhat. I just basically want to talk about the fact that... You can't, you can't question this organization. That's a problem, and we all need to be focused on that, and we all need to push back against it. Um, over at Berkeley, okay, in California, our favorite left, far left school, uh, and just to tell you how far left this place is, Berkeley once kicked the Marines out of Berkeley, saying that they were occupying it, and actually kicked them out. The uh, the city voted on it, and they voted to kick them out. Go look that up. It's 
mind-bendingly stupid. But in this case, they Berkeley tweeted out about an anonymous letter that was circulating, purportedly written by a um, Berkeley history professor. And it, this, this, it's an anonymous letter, but they say, we have no evidence that this letter was written by a history faculty. But, well, yeah, it's anonymous. That's the, the whole point of an anonymous letter. We condemn this letter. Ooh, man, I wonder what is in this letter. It must be bad. It goes against our values as a department and our commitment to equality and inclusion. Wow, okay. This must be a pretty bad letter. If it goes against equality and inclusion and they condemn it. Wow, what, what is in this letter? So this is the letter that they said went against equality and inclusion and that they condemned. Quote, I am one of your colleagues at UC Berkeley. I have met you both personally but do not know you closely and am contacting you anonymously. With apologies. I am worried that writing this email publicly might lead to me losing my job. Pretty good worry. And likely all future jobs in my, in my field. Very good. That's a very legitimate concern, as we've seen. So the letter goes on to argue that academics at UC Berkeley have uncritically accepted narratives promoted by Black Lives Matter. And we know this is true. Uh, there is nobody that is being uh, critical of this movement in the media, academia. The the one people out there, the one group that should be pushing back the Republican Party is not. Because they know. But they they know that if they do, they'll be called racist. And it'll be, you know, uh, we're in a lose-lose situation here. <clears throat> so this is also in the letter. The claim that difficulties in the black community faces are essentially casually explained by exogenous factors in the form of white systemic racism, white supremacy, and other forms of white discrimination remains a problematic hypothesis that should be vigorously challenged by historians. Yes, it should be vigorously challenged right now, but it's not happening by anybody but people in their basements on YouTube. The letter goes on, but the response to this from Berkeley was to condemn it and say it goes against their values as a department and our commitment to equality and inclusion. So being critical of a political movement that is clearly extremists to question that group goes against your commitment to equality and inclusion. I responded to them, you condemn it? So you're hostile towards any criticism of BLM or their claims? You don't see the obvious harm in that? What are you running at Berkeley, a cult? And that is a legitimate concern. I would The fact that our uh, academic institutions are turning into dens for far left cults, essentially, uh, is frightening to me. And it should concern everybody in America. And it seems to be happening across all academia, media, Hollywood, uh, the halls of Congress. Uh, the Democrat Party has been completely taken over. Uh, you know, they're painting murals on the road to where to the point where if you paint over that or you put your own political message on top of their political message, you could get charged with a hate crime. Uh I don't recognize America anymore. This is not the country that I grew up in. These are not the values that I was taught. There are some people pushing back, few people. I, I've seen a couple things. If you go, if you follow me on Twitter, and you should follow me on Twitter, uh, you'll see that some people, some people went out there and actually put a Trump flag, or holding a Trump flag over the BLM sign. I wonder how that will be treated. Um, and just a side note, putting this, the term Black Lives Matter on the road where cars are going to drive over it, I, that doesn't make sense to me. I thought that's something you did out of disrespect. People, they put American flags on the ground and walk, or Israeli flags, and then walk over them. So isn't that a sign of disrespect? That never made sense to me. Maybe uh, some people would agree with me out there. But uh, just wanted to go over that. I just want to tell you guys about that and my feelings. Uh, I don't think it's going to stop anytime soon. Um, I think there will be growing backlash to BLM as they become increasingly uh, involved in our everyday lives. Uh, I did a video the other day about how here in, in, the, uh, in the country where I live, uh, in the sticks, they're in the schools here. Uh, I did a video about how I got a letter from the superintendent that was, sounded like came from BLM or Antifa. Um, and I've seen people posting about events for kids, the BLM events for kids at the schools. Uh, I'm going to push back against this as much as I can as a parent with a kid in the school. But I have a feeling that I will be uh, one of the very few, and uh, there will be others who agree with me, but that won't join me out of fear of being labeled a witch, or I mean a racist, sorry. Uh, we're literally living through another like pseudo-Salem witch trials right now. So um, just want to tell you all about that. I think that's all I have for this episode, so please hit that like button, share, and subscribe. If you want to support this channel, you can do so by looking at the links in the description and the pinned comment. Thanks for watching. Keep coming back.